Today we will learn the basics of Cisco Packet Tracer part 4 using routers. Before going into the details, we will see the outcome. In the previous lecture, we understood how to connect two different local area networks using router theoretically. And now we will see how to connect two different local area networks using router practically with the help of Cisco Packet Tracer. Before going into the Cisco Packet Tracer, we will just have a recapture on routers. A router is a device that connects two or more different local area networks and it is a layer 3 device that operates in network layer and it has memory and it stores routing table in its memory and routers are inevitable device in the internet because internet is a collection of enormous network where every network is going to use different IP schemes and internet is a collection of different different networks with different different IP schemes with different different protocols and routers are inevitable device in the internet. We will just have a recapture on the working of router as well. This is a router, it has two interfaces. This is interface number one and this is interface number two. This interface is going to be connected to one local area network and this interface is connected to another local area network and the IP address of this interface is the default gateway for all the PCs or devices in this local area network. Likewise, the IP address of this interface is the default gateway for all the PCs in this local area network. We will just replicate this scenario using Cisco Packet Tracer. So in Cisco Packet Tracer, we are going to establish inter-LAN communication. To do this, we will now open the Cisco Packet Tracer. Cisco Packet Tracer is before us. In the workspace, firstly, we will create two local area networks. So for that, I am bringing the Cisco switch. I'll bring two switches. These two switches are used for creating two different local area networks. So let me create a local area network number one this side and let me create another local area network this side. And let us have only three PCs. So one, two, three. These three PCs are going to be in this local area network and these three PCs are going to be in this local area network. And we need cables, Ethernet straight through cable in order to connect the devices. So I am using Ethernet straight through cable to connect the devices or the devices to the switch. Similarly, the same cable is used to connect the PCs to the switch. I have completed connecting the cables between the switch and the PCs. So we will now assign IP address to all the individual PCs. We will just establish a local area network. So for this PC, let us use the IP addressing scheme as 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 one and the IP address of this PC be 10.0.0.2 and let the IP address of this PC be 10.0.0.3 Likewise, we have to assign IP address to this local area network also. So here for this local area network, I am preferring 192.168.1.1 and for this PC this is 192.168.1.2 and for the last PC, it is obviously going to be 192.168.1.3. So far we have established a local area network and we will check whether local area network works fine or not. So from this PC, let me ping this PC. The IP address of this PC is 10.0.0.3. So let me click on this PC, go to the command prompt. From this PC, let me ping 10.0.0.3. Yeah, we are able to get reply. It means these computers are reachable. Similarly, from this PC, we have to check whether communication is there with this PC. So this is ping 10.0.0.2. Yeah, we are able to get reply. So this local area network is working fine. We will ensure that whether this local area network is also working fine. Go to the first PC, which is having the IP address 192.168.1.1. We know IP config is the command that is used to see the IP configuration. From this PC, that is 192.168.1.1, we will ping 1.2 and 1.3. So we will check ping 192.168.1.2. Yeah, we are getting replies. Similarly, ping 192.168.1.3. Yeah, this local area network is also working fine because we are able to get reply. So we have established local area network 1 and local area network 2. Now let me give a label like this. This is LAN 1 
and this is using the IP scheme 10.0.0.0 with the subnet mask 255.0.0.0 throughout this network and this is local area network 2 and this is using the IP scheme 192.168.1.0 with 255.255.255.0 so it means if this computer wants to send some data packet to this computer, it needs a router to do this communication. Now we will bring in a router into our scenario. So let's go to the routers. Let me choose 2911 router. Click on the router and bring that router here. So we need some interfaces in this router so as to connect one interface to this local area network, another interface to this local area network. Let's go and see the physical view of this router. Click on this router. Yeah, this router has some interfaces. We have a switch here. This switch, when you click on the switch, now it is an off state. When you click on the switch, it is an on state now. So the router is turned on now. We will just go to the config tab. The device is still booting. We don't want to deal with this now. The device is now on. We can see three interfaces are in the router. Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0, Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 2. We need only two interfaces in order to connect these two local area networks. So let the third interface, let it be unused. So what cable is used in order to connect this switch to this router? This is a layer 2 device and this is a layer 3 device. That is switch is a layer 2 device, router is a layer 3 device. So they are different devices. So obviously we need Ethernet straight through cable in order to connect. So the very important configuration, please have a look meticulously over this. Click on the switch. And we have Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1 port available in the switch. Let me use this Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1. So this cable is connected in the switch in Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1. Similarly, click on the router. We have three interfaces or ports, Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0, Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 2. Let me plug it into Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0. We have to use the same type of cable that is the Ethernet straight through cable. So from this switch, let me use Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1 port and plug the cable to the interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1. Let me put a label for better illustration. So this side, it is using Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0. The name of this interface is Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0. So let me copy this and let me paste it here. And this side, it is Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1. By default, the ports in the routers are turned off, that is, they will be in shutdown mode. We are required to turn it on and please note the interface name, this side interface, it is Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0 and this side it is Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1. Please make a note of this and we are required to assign an IP address to this interface and this IP address should be in this local area network. This PC is having 10.0.0.1. And this PC is with 10.0.0.2 and this PC is having the IP address 10.0.0.3 and this PC is having the IP address 192.168.1.1 and this PC is having 192.168.1.2 and the last PC is having the IP address 192.168.1.3 I have put in a label just to identify the IP address of each PC. We will assign the IP address to this interface. It is 10.0.0.4. And to this interface, let it be 192.168.1.4. In the label only, I have given the IP address. It has no role to play with the scenario. Now we are required to give this IP address to this interface. To assign IP address to this interface, we know the name of the interface is Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0. Just let's click on the router, go to the Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0 configuration path, click on this and we will assign the IP address as 10.0.0.4 and by default it uses the same subnet mask. If you observe the status of the port Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 0 is not turned on. Just check this, now it is turned on. You can now see the port is now turned on. Similarly, we have to assign 192.168.1.4 to this interface and we will turn this interface on or we will turn this port on. Click on this router, go to Gigabit Ethernet 0 bar 1 and we are required to assign 192.168.1.4 and we are required to turn the port on. 
So just give some time for the routers and switches to configure themselves or just simply click fast forward time. Now the entire setup is ready. One side it is having a different local area network, another side it is having a different local area network. So far we have completed the configuration. Let this be the source computer and let this be the destination computer. We will try pinging from 10.0.0.2 to 192.168.1.1. It means let this be the destination computer and let this be the source computer. From this computer, go to the command prompt and we will issue the command ping 192.168.1.1. You can observe that we are not getting replies. Did we miss something? Yes, we failed to do one configuration. We will try pinging the second computer, ping. 192.168.1.2 and for this ping request also we won't get replies. Why? Because we missed one thing in the configuration and if you observe the packets are not reaching the destination and we will troubleshoot this problem. The problem is the interface, the IP address of this interface is 10.0.0.4 and this is the default gateway for all the PCs or all the devices in this network. We didn't give that so far. So just click on the PC, every individual PC, go to the IP configuration and say the default gateway is 10.0.0.4. And similarly, you just copy this and paste it in all the PCs of this local area network. So all the PCs is having the default gateway as 10.0.0.4. And the default gateway for all these PCs should be 192.168.1.4. Click on this PC, go to the IP configuration, it is 192.168.1.4. Just select it and press Ctrl C for copy and paste this in the default gateway of all the other PCs. We are done with the configuration part. Now the configuration is 100% completed. From this PC, we will ping this PC. Just click on this PC, go to the command prompt, ping. 192.168.1.1 It means I am pinging the first computer. Sometimes the first packet will get failed but obviously we will get reply for the second packet because we have done the configuration. We could observe that yes the first packet is failed but we got the replies from the second packet and henceforth we will get reply for all the packets. I repeat the same execution but now we are able to get replies for all the packets. At the same time we will ping the second PC also ping. 192.168.1.2 that is the second PC in the second local area network. First packet may go fail for the first time but later on all the packets will be successful. Yeah, you could notice that now we are able to get the reply. Now we will see it in the simulation mode because we have done it in the real time mode. Now we will see it in the simulation mode. Go to the simulation mode and take a packet. Let this be the source computer and let this be the destination computer. Now it is in progress, click capture bar forward, the switch receives this packet and first time communication switch always broadcast but it is not going to be the case in the second time communication. And first time communication, the first packet because we are initiating this request for the first time, the first packet normally gets failed. Now we will observe the second time communication, this is the source and this is the destination and it is in progress, capture. Now switch will not do broadcasting. Why? Because it has learned the MAC address. Now if you observe, this switch is forwarding the data. Now this PC has got the packet. Now the reply is sent to the router now. The router sends the data. Now just please watch here. And the final capture bar forward, it is successful. It has got the acknowledgement. This communication is successful. I hope now you are clear with Intel and communication in Cisco Packet Tracer. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood how to connect two different local area networks using router practically in Cisco Packet Tracer. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.